أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Mediation Analysis Using AMOS IBM SPSS AMOS Series This is a two-part lecture. In the first part of the lecture, I am going to just discuss the theory of mediation. However, in the second part of the lecture, I am going to practically discuss and run mediation using AMOS. This is the first session of mediation analysis using AMOS. Introduction to Mediation Up to this point, we have focused on one construct that directly influences the other construct in a SCM model. Let's now examine how the influence of two constructs may take an indirect path through a third variable which we can call a mediator. In these situations, the third variable will actually intervene on the influence between the two constructs. That's why a mediating variable is also referred to as an intervening variable. In testing if mediation or the presence of a mediator in a model, you will actually need to understand some of the terminologies which are direct effect, indirect effect and total effects. Now have a look here. This C actually represents the relationship between X and Y and this is the total effect. Why? Because there is no other variable in the model and the effect of X and Y can be referred to as the total effect. Now here the relationship between X and Y is represented by a C complement and this relationship here is referred to as direct effect because some of the effect may be passing through this other variable which is the mediating variable. So what happens is X influences M and M influences Y. Now in this case a direct effect is simply a direct relationship between an independent variable and a dependent variable in presence of the mediator and is represented by C complement. So the influence of X on Y in presence of a mediator is represented by C complement and this is referred to as direct effect. Here it was total effect because there was no mediator present. An indirect effect is the relationship that flows from an independent variable to a mediator and then to the dependent variable and is calculated by multiplying A into B. So your indirect effect is actually the relationship that flows from X to M which is your mediator and M to Y where the relationship from X to M is represented by A and M to Y is represented by B and you can calculate your indirect relationship by multiplying A into B. So the term total effect is actually the combined effect that is your direct effect and your indirect effect. So if you add your direct effect that is C complement and you add your indirect effect which you can calculate by multiplying A and B. So if you add these you will get your total effect. So this here is your direct effect and the effect flowing from X to M to Y is your indirect effect. Now without the mediator the effect of X on Y is referred to as the total effect. Now there are different forms of indirect effects. There could be partial mediation when some of the effect is passing through M and some of the effect is passing directly. When the indirect path from X to M and M to Y is significant and the direct path here is also significant. So this is partial mediation. Full mediation is where you have a significant indirect effect from X to Y. That is your impact on X on Y is passing through your variable M. However, your direct effect is insignificant. That is the effect from X to Y is insignificant. The whole effect of X on Y is actually passing through this third variable which we call M. In this case, we can call it full mediation because all of the effect is passing through this particular variable or the mediating variable M. In this case, some of the effect was passing directly while some of the effect was indirect. So what is complementary mediation? 
Complementary mediation is where the indirect effect, that is the effect passing through M, and the direct effect, that is the impact of X on Y in presence of the mediator, both have similar influence. For example, both having a positive influence. In this case, we call it complementary mediation. However, competitive mediation is where the indirect effect, that is the effect of X on Y through M, and the direct effect, that is the effect of X on Y, they have dissimilar influence. What do we mean by dissimilar influence? The direct effect is negative, as in the example, and the indirect effect is positive. So they have different signs. In this case, we call it competitive mediation. Now, how do we test mediation? The research by Barron and Kenny in 1986 was one of the fundamental frameworks for how to test mediation. Over the years, research has refined their initial work on testing mediation. I think it's a worthy pursuit to discuss where mediation testing started and where it progressed today. Barron and Kenny stated that there were four steps in testing mediation. Number one, make sure that X has a significant influence on Y, that is your C path in absence of M must be significant. Your step two, it tests that X has a significant influence on M, that is your A path, and no Y is included. This needs to be significant as well. Your step three, it tests that X has a significant influence on M, and M has a significant influence on Y, both A and B are significant. And your step 4. It tests the direct and indirect relationship simultaneously and determines if and what type of indirect effect is present. A, B and C paths are all being evaluated. So you've got your IV, your DV and the mediator in the same model. Now what are the criticisms on baron kenny approach? The first is the Barron and Kenny method was based on finding the unstandardized coefficients for each relationship and then determining significance using Sobel test. As the research has progressed, this method of testing mediation has changed and Sobel testing has been rejected as a valid means of testing mediation. Even in the initial steps outlined by Barron and Kenny, these have changed as well. The first step that the C path needs to be significant is not a requirement anymore. Your indirect effects can be present even if a non-significant C path is initially found. So even though your total effect initially the impact of X on Y is insignificant, you can still have a significant indirect effect. The justification is based on the idea that there are suppressor effects that prevent the C path from being significant, but the indirect effect is still present. The idea that A path and B path have to individually be significant have been rejected as well. Hayes in 2018 notes that indirect effect is the product of A and B and the statistical significance of either A or B is not a requirement for the mediation. So your A and B path may be insignificant but still you can have a significant indirect effect. Now how do we test mediation? The revised method is now concerned with assessing the indirect effect by examining the product of A path and the B path while controlling for the direct effect of the C path. Now since the Sobel test is flawed for this type of test, the more accepted approach in mediation testing is to use a bootstrap technique to determine significance. A bootstrap technique treats your data sample like a pseudo population and takes a random sample with a replacement to determine if your indirect effect falls within the confidence interval. So what you're doing is you're actually treating your whole sample as a new population whereby through random number generation that particular sample is used to generate another sample. Maybe 5000, 10,000, 1000 or any number of bootstrap samples are generated. So your normal recommendation is 5000. Note that with the bootstrap sample, the computer program will generate a completely different sample every time you run the analysis. So that's why every time you will run your bootstrap analysis, you will have some differences in your results. To control for this, you can ask Amos to always use the same seed number, which will produce the exact same results if you run the bootstrap analysis again. However, 
we are going to look into this later. Let's look at an example in AMOS of a mediation test. Using the full structure model example, we want to examine if the construct of authentic leadership has an indirect effect through self-efficacy to the construct of life satisfaction. So your mediator is self-efficacy, your IV is authentic leadership and your DV is life satisfaction. Notice that I am including a direct path from authentic leadership to life satisfaction. This will allow to see what type of mediation is actually present in the analysis. Here, so there is a direct path which is C complement and then there are the indirect paths from authentic leadership to self-efficacy, from self-efficacy to life satisfaction. This is path A, this is path B and this is path C complement. Without the presence of self-efficacy, this would have been just C. If you want to know more about mediation and other techniques in AMOS, this is a very good read. Thank you very much.